Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 71 of the Houston Astros franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Today we only have one series for you as it is an interleague one on the MLB Network. Houston Astros go on the road to face the 43 and 44 Philadelphia Phillies. We have three series left until the All-Star break so we'll do one this episode and then we'll end the All-Star break. We'll get to the All-Star break with the set of two at home. So. That's how we're going to break it up with a road episode and a home episode. So if you're excited for this one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below. Especially if you want more franchise content. You guys have really been showing out recently. And I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me. But Ranger Suarez takes the mound for the Phillies. Alex Bregman will lead off for Houston in this one. He's hitting 307. That is third on the Astros. And he will strike out to begin the day. Change up down in the zone. He can't catch up to that one. Avisar Garcia is playing right field today, and he's going to sharply hit a 3-1 count to the second baseman. And let's take a look at the Houston Astros lineup. Just saw Alex Bregman and Avisar Garcia. Next, we'll see Altuve, followed by Alvarez in left field. He's no DH today because they are in the National League. Correa in the fifth spot, followed by Springer, Bell, and Stubbs. And Jose Urquidy will bat ninth. Astros are the best slugging team in the American League with a 485 slugging percentage. But it's going to be Altuve getting a bunt down that gets him on base. Gene Segura can't field it. They will record an error on him. I think I would have probably considered that one a hit. But it's not going to matter as Alvarez grounds to the shortstop who throws out Altuve at second to end the half of the inning. Rickitty is on the mound for Houston. He settles his ERA back down to 361. One of the surprise breakout stars of their 2021 season. He goes into his second full league's in full season in the majors. Gene Segura will lead off for Philadelphia, hitting 220 so far on the season. 0-1 to him, and he chops it to his fellow third baseman on the other side, Bregman, and he will throw him out at first base. Now, take a look at the Phillies lineup. Gene Segura led us off. Next up, you will see Bryson Scott, the rookie shortstop, had a phenomenal month of June, got in you know, a rookie of the month. Bryce Harper in right, Rice Hopkins at first, JT Realmuto, Nick Williams, Scott Kingery, Kevin Kiermaier in center, and then Ranger Suarez obviously at ninth. Here is Bryson Scott who will pop up a 2-1 into shallow right center. It will be fielded by Springer for out number two. It's going to bring up the always dangerous former MVP Bryson Harper, but he strikes out on the changeup. Nice pitch by our kitty, and both teams are scoreless through one. Let's go to our kitty at the plate now, shall we? Starts off the top of the third at the plate. And he's drawn himself into a full count. Change up at the knees gets called strike three. I don't know about that call, but our kitty strikes out to begin the inning. Next up, another change up down in the zone. This time, Bregman is not going to chase that one. And he will draw the one out walk. Avisa Garcia up next on a 3 1. He lies this one perfectly into left in front of the left fielder. And that'll be back-to-back -back base runners for Houston. Altuve up next. 1-0 to him. And he hits a changeup into the gap in left center. Bregman's going to come around and score with ease. Garcia, he rounds third. He's headed home. Throw is not in time. And Houston has the first two runs of the ball game thanks to a two-RBA double from the former AL MVP, Jose Altuve. Jordan Alvarez up next. 3-2 to him. And he pops this one up into center. Kevin Kiermaier will field this one for out number two. Altuve will stay at second base. Next up, Carlos Correa. First pitch to him. He chops this one to Segura. Nice field by him. Throws him out at first. The Astros strike for two in the top of the third. Bottom four now. Phillies at the plate led by Bryce Harper. One, two to Harper. And he lines this one deep into the left center gap. That one's going to go all the way up against the wall. Springer was shifted right a little bit for Harper, and he gets this one, and he has a leadoff double to begin the Phillies. Phillies are third in the National League in doubles with 152. This isn't a double, though, as Hoskins draws the next walk, so it puts the runners on first and second. Still nobody out. Next batter pitch in the dirt. Runners will advance as well, so there goes the double play threat. Now runners, two runners in scoring position. 2-2 now, but that's going to be a strikeout. So that's a nice out number one. Can Urquidy work his way out of the jam? Nick Williams up next, 0-1 count, bloops it in the right field. And Garcia blatantly misplays this one. That was a horrible angle 
And we have two runs scored. Garcia doesn't field this one cleanly. Williams gets to third base. They're going to rule that one a two-run triple. I think that's an error. Garcia had a horrible jump on it, misplayed the ball. At the very least, it's a single in an error. But nonetheless, Williams gets a triple. He scores on the next ground out. And Philadelphia takes the lead 3-2 in the bottom of the fourth. Our kitty, things have really changed. He does get the pop-up out in the right field. But now, Philadelphia has a one-run lead through four innings. Do the Astros have any sort of answer as the next half inning? Bregman draws a leadoff walk. That's his second walk of the day. Suarez having a little bit of trouble with his command. Is on 3-2. Garcia rips a changeup down in the zone. Would have been ball four, but instead it's a 5-4-3 double play. And that will change the tide in this one. Altuve, two outs up next. First pitch swinging on a slider. He ropes this one to left center. Off the wall and left. Williams gets to it, but Altuve has himself a two-out double. And that's going to bring up Jordan Alvarez. Full count to Alvarez. He hits a fastball. Is trailing away from Williams, and Williams can't get to it in time. Alvarez with an RBI double ties this one up at three. Big time hit for Alvarez. Haven't seen that recently, but Jordan comes through in the top of the fifth, his 17th double of the season. And the Astros keep it going. Well, Correa, he's going to ground out to the shortstop, so no, they cannot. But we're tied up again, this time at three. Bottom five now. Philly's back of the dish. Lead off single into right. Garcia feels this one cleanly this time, but that's another base runner for Philadelphia. Up next, Gene Segura. He's going to single up the middle as well. Back-to-back -back singles for Philly. Puts two runners on, and our kitty in another jam. Next up is Scott. They're going to try to lay down a bunt with the rookie. He gets it down to Bregman. They throw the runner out at second. Can't get Scott at first, however, so that'll put runners on the corners. One out for Harper, and Harper ropes this one into the gap in right center, up against the wall in a hurry. Springer will field it. He does get to it in time, as they're not going to test his arm home. And Philly only gets one. There's still only one out, however, and the next batter, they're going to intentionally walk, load the bases, but force the double play. Very interesting call as Hoskins takes first, and the next batter up is going to ground it to Correa, 6-4-3. The intentional walk works to perfection, and Philadelphia only gets one. That'll be all we see of Ranger Suarez as Jose Alvarez comes in for his 51st game already of the season. Another lefty pitcher, and Correa will, or Springer, excuse me, will single into right to start at the top of the six. Astros trying to keep pace with Philadelphia. Josh Bell draws a walk. So that's two runners on for Houston as they look for another sort of inning. Stubbs up next. He's going to lay a sacrifice bunt. It's fielded, thrown out at second, but no double play. So both teams try and sack bunts. And now Houston has runners on the corners, one out. It's going to be to the pitcher spot, but Justin Smoke's going to come in and pitch hit. Interesting call as Smoke comes to the dish. He's only hitting 230, but he checks his swing. It doesn't matter. He draws the walk, putting runners on every single base with one out. Alvarez's day is done. Victor Arano now comes in, who has a 685 ERA. We'll see if Philadelphia has a lot more luck with a right-handed hit. Pitcher and Bregman on the very first pitch will hit this one deep to right field. Harper fields it. They're going to test his arm. Throw to the plate is not in time. It's also offline. And that'll tie this game up at four again. So Astros going tit for tat with Philly. But Garcia, he's tired of tying this one up. He's going to put Astros ahead. That's a RBI single. Smoke gets on his horse, goes to third. But now Houston has the lead again for the first time. Since the bottom of the fifth, they're up, or bottom of the fourth, excuse me, they're up 5 4. Inning continues as Jose Altuve draws a walk, putting runners on every base again. Alvarez at the plate gets a nice pitch to hit, but it's right at Williams and left. So bases are left loaded, but Houston has taken the lead again. We're going to go to the bottom of the eighth now. Philly's trying to get that run back. They're running out of time as Joe Smith comes on in the bottom of the eighth, having a phenomenal season. JT Real Muto, arguably the best catcher in the National League, will step to the plate. He is tasked with getting this eighth started. 2-2 to Real Muto. He chops this one to the rough side of the infield. Correa fields it. Thrown out of first. There's one away. 
Next batter 2-0 will ground this one to the left side of the infield. The only man over there is Bregman, and he fields it and throws him out at first. So that's two outs. And Philly's down to four more outs. Next batter, he strikes out as well. Perfect inning from Joe Smith. That'll send us to the ninth, where Ryan Presley will come in this time to close. Houston's kind of going with a platoon closer spot as Hand took the seventh inning with Bryce Harper in that inning. So that leaves Presley in the ninth this time. And on the very first batter, he's going to hit it deep to right center. There is Springer, but he misplays it, and it goes over his glove for a ground rule double. Tying run is on second, and it's Kevin Kiermeyer. He's got some speed. However, Presley does strike out the pinch hitter. Top of the order, however, though, Segura gets a bad call. That was ball four. Segura, I don't blame him being upset with that one. But now it's two outs. Bryson Scott is the last hope. He hits this one to shallow center, and that is going to end this ball game. Houston squeaks by with a 5-4 victory here in game one, and they will be victorious. Or Kitty actually does get the win despite giving up four earned runs, even though, to my opinion, two of those weren't earned, but I digress. Alvarez gets the loss. Presley gets his 11th save. Both teams had 10 hits. It was just Houston with an extra run. Player of the game is Jose Altuve. He went two for four with those two doubles as well as two ribbies as he has been playing at a very high level. Lots of doubles in this game. Houston, they had four doubles. Philadelphia, they had six doubles. Harper had three doubles in his own right. Before we get to game two, month of July is picked up and there's a lot of teams making trades including our division rivals. They pick up a prospect, but in turn trade Alexis Nunez, a very hot commodity closer prospect, to Kansas City, and they get Yairo Munoz, a B potential shortstop who's already 26. So that's a very intriguing trade by the defending World Series champions. Game two, we do drop 10 to four to Philly thanks to a six run six for the Phillies. About to see who gave up this one. As it looks like Harper had a good day as well as Real Muto and Kingery. There's four home runs for Philadelphia. It was Armenteros and Peacock who got rocked in this one. Before we get to game three, here's where the trades really start to happen. There's three trades on July 3rd. We're going to start off with Cleveland and New York, where the Indians acquire first base prospect Dominique Smith. It's not really a prospect anymore, but he is 25. New York's been looking to move him for a few years now. They finally get a deal done with the Indians in the American League. And Cleveland ships prospect Logan Allen to New York. A nice, solid pitching prospect, 23 years old. He has a bright future ahead, and he's been pitching good for Cleveland this year. The second trade was to our division rival Angels. They pick up arguably the second best bat in Baltimore in Trey Mancini. Mancini's hit 281 so far this season. He is their best player besides Mookie Betts, so you got to wonder why the Orioles even traded or signed Mookie Betts if they're trading away all of his help. Angels do give up a couple prospects, one of them being Jose Suarez. And they also gave up a catcher in Trace Barea. 68 overall B potential, but our division rivals get even stronger in right field thanks to the addition of Trey Mancini. And lastly, Athletics, after making an interesting prospect move, they trade prospects to acquire one of the youngest, or not one of the youngest, one of the best up-and-coming second baseman in Nick Senzel. He hasn't been having one of the best seasons in Cincy, but 83 overall A potential at a very young age. He's going to be a problem for us. It did come at a price, however, as they traded Robert Pawson, one of their prized prospects from this past draft class. He has been traded to Cincinnati, Bryce Ball as well, and Trace Lower. So they gave up three prospects, including Pawson, who is the 17th best prospect according to the rankings. We'll to see how that trade works out for Oakland. Game three, we do win the series, though, three to nothing. Nice shutout ball for Lance McCullers. He's had a couple of nice quality starts in a row. And we win this series two out of three games. Presley closed the night for us again. Lastly, we got two more trades to take a look at. The Orioles and the Reds stay busy, as well as this time the Cardinals and the Red Sox. We'll take a look at the Orioles and the Reds first. The Orioles trade John Means to Cincinnati, so another veteran being traded, as it looks like Baltimore is trying to rebuild despite having Mookie Betts on roster. They acquire third base prospect Reitz Hines, a 67 overall B potential at 20 years of age, as well as Jose Lopez, a young, well not young, 27 year old pitcher. It's an interesting trade for Baltimore. And the other trade, another big one, this time a nice 
prospect or a nice up-and-coming left fielder comes to Boston. Tyler O'Neill from St. Louis. Boston traded Andrew Benatendi to Atlanta in the offseason. They're trying to replace him with Tyler O'Neill. They do give up Bobby Dahlbeck, however, a corner infielder who at 25 years of age had a solid 2020 in limited appearances. And they also give up Jake Anchia, a catcher prospect, 60 overall, only see potential. He will go to St. Louis as well. Next episode, like I said, we have two series left, a four-game homestand against Cleveland, followed by a two-game interleague homestand against Colorado, our interleague cross rivals. We'll take a look at that one. That'll take us to the All-Star break. We'll get another appearance by Josh James as he goes against Shane Bieber. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you do leave a like and subscribe down below if you do want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.